what's going on, y'all? So, got this semi-late review of Friday Night Smackdown. Now, to just set the tone, it's only a, there's only a couple... I'm like, well, I wouldn't even say a couple. Only like two eventful things happened. So this was a pretty good time, average good time show. But it did have two significant things. One right off the bat, or I want to say right off the bat, and then it wasn't a start, but let me get into it. So, but we did get a return. One of the significant things is a return. Um, but yeah, so they started off with, they got right into it. We got into a match with the brawling, with the brawling Bruce taking on uh, Solo, Soko, Solo Sokoa and Sami Zayn in a tag team match. And you know, like I said, sometimes it's, it's refreshing that they get straight to a fight and not just you know do a whole uh, promo thing to start the show along with it. One and then you know then get, we finally get to the first match tonight. So like I said, it's always refreshing when they do that. And the match itself was a good first match. It got the distance to two commercial breaks, two or maybe three commercial breaks actually. And it was a very good match between the two. And you know what the thing was? I was not expecting the win who the winner was. But I also I got to mention too, before the match started, uh, or before not before the match started, but the Brawling Bruce made their entrance before Sami Zayn and Solo made their entrance. Uh, they had a, it was like a little mini backstage promo with Sammy and them. We're trying to get everybody on the same page because the uh, tribal chief was going to be arriving any moment, and that and he basically the way he said it, it was it was always going to be after the match. By the time the match is over, with Roman Reigns should have been in the building, and that he want he want he wanted to make sure that with Roman Reigns get to the building and Roman Reigns see their hands raised in victory and he gets everybody on the same page. Even um Jay for the most part get on the same page. But they, uh, now we can get to the match itself, which was a good match. There was a it was a good match too between the two. Um but like I said, the winner or what I say between the two, between the four of them. Uh the winner though was, like I said it was unexpected. I did not expect that the brawling Bruce was gonna get the victory here. And I think they got a roll-up pin on Sami Zayn. Now, uh, I w I'm going to say this here probably because I'm probably going to forget it. But it was because of that, later on in the night, it was announced that at Crown Jewel, uh, the uh, the Braun and Bruce would get a shot at the, uh, uh, the Undisputed uh, Unified Tag Team Championship at Crown Jewel against Jimmy and Jay Uso. So basically, the whole bloodline is going to be at Crown Jewel. So now, after the match, this and uh, this was due to the fact that Jay, to the miscommunication between Sammy and Jay, was starting into an argument because Sammy, due to the distraction of uh, of Pete Dunn, I think uh, Sammy was going. Sammy realized Pete Dunn was distracted, so what Pete Dunn was going to do, whatever he was about to do off the top rope, Sammy was looked like he was basically lying and waiting, paying possum, so he could reverse and get the pinfall. But Jay pulled Sammy out the ring, to which. Uh, Basically started the miscommunication that led into the Brawling Bruce get the victory. The reason why I mention this here because they basically got into a big argument where they was getting into each other's face. But uh, out of care, out of nowhere, both Solo and uh, both Solo and Jimmy stood up for Sammy and basically it was like they was about to confront Jay, like Jay was the one in the wrong. But before he could go any further, that's what Roman Reigns. Um, Music hit and thus we got a commercial break and then we now at our next segment which is the bloodline promo and basically you know he did his usual acknowledge me but he he basically kicked up the promo I said that he he dis he was not only displeased they could they when he kept when his music hit and he was coming out he looked like he was pissed and he looked like the scared children that did something wrong that was all in the ring like man damn. He, I know he pissed at us. Like they all had their hands down and stuff. They scared a little children. They even referenced how he. They even, it was even referenced on commentary how he was like a king to their daddy. Uh, but yeah, Roman Reigns basically said y'all since y'all want to act like children, referencing referring to Jay and Sami Zayn, then I want to treat you like y'all children. I want all this aired out now. I want all this fixed between the two of y'all. I want it fixed right now. And 
the, this, this is the part. This is one of the two significant things that happened. This whole entire promo was gold. Now I'm going to tell you why. So basically, Sami Zayn starts first by trying to apologize to Jay, saying that whatever I did to offend you, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you, but like I said, whatever I did, I apologize for it. He stick his hand out to you know for Jay to shake it, but Jay tells him, "Man, you gonna get the hand that hand away from me in two seconds. You but you know he's he gonna get got." So then he basically Jay says his piece and basically tells Sammy that he doesn't like him. He doesn't like his hair, doesn't like his face, doesn't like anything about Sammy, and that the uh that how you know it's telling him that how you gonna be try how you gonna try to be part of the bloodline is you not blood. He said everybody that's a part of the bloodline is his, is blood. That's a family. And he said I bleed. He said I I have I bled and I will bleed for my family. Would you do it? And then you know. He basically, you know, he basically tell, tell him to answer the question, would he bleed for the bloodline? You know, uh, Jay and uh, Sammy, I mean, basically dances around it and said that, why are you yelling at me? Blah, blah, blah. And, and you know, you know, the tribal chief said he wanted uh, peace. I'm trying to make peace because that's what the tribal chief said. The tribal chief wanted peace. And he was like, I don't give a damn what the tribal chief says. And every, what, this is where it becomes pure gold because everybody in unison the moment that he said that Roman Reigns head came up was like the hell did you just say he was like you know he he was like what the the hell and he was he was he was trying to figure out what and you know and the whole crowd was like oh you they kept saying you effed up you effed up and everybody in unison even in the ring and the crowd knew how big of a messed up moment that was, and Roman is about to confront Jay until Sammy tried to, uh, you know, ease the tension. He's in, and he said he was like, you know, Jay's been through a lot. He's been through a lot. He's just haven't been himself. He's haven't been, he haven't, he haven't been, you know, feeling. He haven't been feeling himself. He haven't been oozy, and apparently, uh, in in their native language. Uzi is a cuss word. That's the reason why I say this is because once he said Uzi, it broke Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns and Jay is supposed to be angry. You know, Jay is supposed to be angry. Roman Reigns, for everybody's supposed to be angry and, and shocked at what Jay just said. But the moment Sammy said Uzi, Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns looked at Sam and looked at Sammy Zayn, and then he like. And he just he had to go he had to try to hide his face because he was trying to look at Sammy with you know with intensity but but Roman couldn't keep it together. He was like, Oh my and he, he so he so then he, he used it and he, he played that he was basically laughing out of character, that like he broke character and he was laughing but he used it like to be like in a way he was like, So you mean you take that's what's really wrong with him? Like that's that's it. Like you know, he, he that's how he covered his laugh. He used it with the character. Like the character was just like, wait a minute, hold up. Instead of being mad, <laughs> that, that's all. And uh, all the while, Jay is trying to hide his face. He is had, he has completely broken. He cannot stop. He can't even stop grinning. He 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 is like he's doing all this, trying to hide his face, trying to pinch it, trying to go like this, trying to stop himself from laughing. But you know, and uh, Roman, so Roman, they have fun with. It. At this point, is the the intensity is gone because the crowd see it, everybody see it, they in broke character. It, Jay Jimmy in the background can't stop laughing. <laughs> they won't so solo. Even Paul Heyman is you know, is smiling. Uh, it, he just goes, "Oh yeah." So he said, "So I don't." Know, he, he said, "He like no, he he you know he, like, he, 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 he was talking to Sammy and Sammy like yeah he, he can't find his inner Uzi and Sam, Jay just looks over at Sammy because he says it again. He looks at Sammy and then he's like oh. He realized the camera's in his face, so he tried to turn because he didn't bust out. He tried to, he didn't start smiling again. So he, he and his Roman like, no, 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 no. Stand right here. Turn around. Stand right here. They just have fun with at this point. They torturing Jay. So uh, Jimmy, this is where Jimmy busts out laughing again because he knows what Roman about to do. So because Roman was like, so if you can't find your inner 
and Jay just Jimmy just lose it. Jimmy is about he has to try to like duck behind Sammy and Roman because he sees where the cameras at, so he trying to duck behind them so the camera won't pick him up that he's laughing. And he said, if you can't find your inner Uzi, and Jay just puts his head down because he's now he's laughing again. And he said, I'm gonna do something that you don't like. I'm gonna take this honorary Uzi away and make him a full blown Uzi. And that's when he finally lifts his head back up. It's like, come on, G. Like he, he, he said, we even gonna rename it to Sammy Uso. They the crowd chat Sammy Uso. I'll be on this segment long enough. Let's get let's move on. So real quick, because this is supposed to be a quick uh, review. Uh, that was the go. That was that whole segment was golden. Uh, Paul Hemi did say something. Uh, we got the next match, which is Maximum Male Models versus the New Day. Pretty good match. New Day won in good fashion. Uh, we got another. We got the open challenge match between uh, with Ronda Rousey. Uh, Ronda Rousey. Uh, did she cut a backstage promo about it? But the, and, or no, she cut. She cut a promo in uh, in the ring about her being champion. About uh, about forcing the crowd to basically almost like Roman Reigns acknowledge her as the as the, what a champion should be. And that she find, and she asked she finally wanted her open challenge to come out. And this is the return too. We got the return of Emma, and I heard the rumors. I did. I heard the rumors that Emma is like the uh, the girlfriend to uh, Mad Cat Moss, and I heard we heard the rumors that uh, you know it's been rumors going around that she might be making her way back to the company, and she actually did. She returned in this championship match against um, against uh, you know uh, uh, Ronda Rousey, and the thing is about Emma. She's made such a good name for herself on the independent scene, and she had that she's now. They what I'm hearing, she could be taken seriously now as one of the top contenders for a for the women's championship. But anywho, uh, and Ronda and her had a good match. She even took it to Ronda. It wasn't like a, a quick beat them up by Ronda. She Ronda actually got took it to almost her limit, but Ronda will win with the arm bar. Beating Emma in her in her return, uh, there was a backstage promo with her and uh, Santa Blazer, who's finally been seen on TV, where they talk where they were talking about her title defense. They were talking about whoever they call it, what's her face. They don't even know who she is. Um, but Natalia tried to get in Ronda's face about her about if it was her who asked it over China, she probably would have beat Ronda. And Santa basically choked out uh, Natalia. Um, we got we got the next match, which is Hit Row versus uh the Gal Del Fantasma, and uh which is a six man tag. They revealed a mystery partner to be Sisuke Nakamura, which was a good quick match by the two. And Hit Row, uh, Hit Row and Sisuke Nakamura took on the victory. Uh, we got the uh pretty much the main event match. Of the night, which is the last match of the night, which is Karrion Cross versus uh, versus Mad Cat Moss, uh, um, which was a good match, which was actually surprisingly good. It wasn't a squash match. They actually made Mad Cat look good here. He actually took it to uh, to uh, Karrion Cross. Karrion Cross did just dominate the whole match, and then with just one you know flurry of offense from Mad Cat. Madcap actually, uh, or Rick Moss, he actually took it to uh, uh, Karrion Cross, and they had a good match. But Karrion Cross won with the cross jacket, or, or no, he, I guess that with that, I forgot what they call uh, that move he do now when he hit him in the back of the head. But they actually gave that. That's actually another one of his finishers. And then after the match, he put uh, Madcap or Riddick. In a uh, cross jacket to send a message to uh, Drew McIntyre that uh, at Crown Jewel he was going to beat him. Uh, Bray Wyatt was the basically the main event where he came out cut a promo about him again saying this is the real Bray Wyatt and that he is he this is the realest they, they ever seen him and that he was going he's not afraid to do horrible things that that along this journey they're going to take he's going to do horrible things. Then he gets a promo. He gets interrupted by a, a video package promo on his Titan Tron phone. Your the phone, the Uncle Howdy, who tells him that rebel and what you are, and that uh, 
he basically called Bray Wyatt a liar because Bray Wyatt mentioned something about uh, not wearing a mask anymore that he don't have to wear a mask and the Uncle Holly said you know you're a liar that you that you we both know that you wear a mask that uh, that he's basically going to expose Bray Wyatt and he blames Bray Wyatt for the fiend's departure said that he sent the fiend away and that he can't escape his old uncle Howdy and they ended the promo there. Uh, I've been going back and forth. Just either my my little subtitle for this is going to be Usi, uh, Sammy Zayn, Sammy breaks everyone, or Emma. I was I probably decide afterwards, but it's going to be one of the three. Is either going to say Usi, Sammy breaks everyone, or Emma? But this episode was a decent, good episode. I enjoyed it. It wasn't nothing too eventful happen. Oh, uh, I think uh, Braun Strowman cut a promo uh, uh, on on Moss too backstage. Uh, but yeah, there's nothing, nothing too important to happen. Just more stuff moving forward with the two most eventful things being the return of Emma and uh, the blood, uh, the bloodline promo. So I'm gonna give this. I'm gonna give it just because of that golden stellar promo for the bloodline. I'm gonna give this a seven out of ten because I was gonna give it a six, but I give it a seven out of ten, raising it to okay to good. And that you let me know in the comments below what you thought. If you enjoyed this review, you hit this button right there in the upper right corner for all of my Dela E reviews. And if you enjoyed this review video so much and want to support the channel, hit those buttons because it's helped the YouTube algorithm bring in more, and I mean more, tribe members. And as always, hit you one of these videos or video for more amazing content, but they're going anywhere because I got the review for Stargirl and some reactions coming your way. Peace.